Welcome back to the Breadcrumbs Project where we are picking up a lot of crumbs of information about these comets and asteroids and it adds up in one direction of just a bizarre interpretation of what's happening and we are having very little information to push us in the direction that this is kind of a casual event. Nothing to see here. Um, usually when space events happen, uh, NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and all the public relations instruments of government get geared up and start going to town to explain and talk about these events that are occurring. And I keep referring back to Shoemaker Levy 9, which in comparison to these comets that are within our inner solar system is really a non-event, but it was a huge event back then. And these big events like Comet uh, Atlas Y1, Comet Atlas Y4, uh, Comet Swan, and now um, these asteroids, uh, uh, 1998 uh, OR2, and um, in 2020 AT6, these two incredible asteroids that are truly near-Earth objects are just not getting any attention and there's no information from NASA or JPL about these very recent discoveries that have been hovering close to our planet and I think it is um, it is uh, asteroid uh, AT6 that is making those bright objects appear uh, in the sky and, uh, and in close proximity to Venus and is causing that big, bright, and, and uh, incredible object to occur, which could be, uh, as I've talked about, the, um, the white brother from the, Hopi, um, from the Hopi tradition, because we've definitely had the, uh, the blue Kashna and the red Kashna uh, occur. And so we're, look we're looking at and seeing the white uh, brother approached the earth. These are so many different traditions and so many different uh, prophecies that are coming true so quickly together um, that is just pretty incredible. Oh, and one of my commenters was worried that uh, I was using a green screen to hide where I am. Well, no, this, this is my living room and I am in, um, in Northwest Spain uh, to give you a location. Um, and then to prove this is not a green screen. Oh, I don't know if you saw that. Let me get another little ball and do it again just to make sure that you see it. I'll go another object. All right, so no green screen. Um, how did this start? Uh, last month, at the end of last month, we had this comet Atlas, which was huge and coming in very fast, three times the normal speed of a comet, and it was half the size of planet Earth. Well, that's what the government agencies were telling us, and so of course we got the it got our attention. Uh, then radio silence, but we could tell on the software that 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 tracks um, these these comets. Uh, especially uh, the web page, uh, the Sky Live, when we when we track uh, Comet Atlas Y4 and Y1 uh, versus other comets, we can see that these things are coming into our inner solar system really fast, truly three times the size of, a, of an a, uh, the speed of an average comet, and we can't say anything about size because we're not getting any information from from you, our usual sources, which, which are the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and NASA, and their PR teams, which just, you know, they have press days and they have all the engineers and the astronomers talking. That's not happening. There's just radio silence. And then SWAN, Comet SWAN, suddenly appears from the Southern Hemisphere. So we have a, a blue comet um, in the Red Hemisphere, I mean, Northern, Northern Hemisphere, and another blue comet coming from the Southern Hemisphere. And these are going to uh, be really, really close. There's going to be a confluence of these two uh, around May 20, 21, 22, and 23. Uh, these two comets 
are going to be in the very same, very close area. They will intersect. They will not hit each other, but they certainly will intersect. And the intersection will be very, uh, very close to the planet Earth. And these two asteroids that I've been following, as you can see in my previous video, we will all be in an alignment come May uh, 21st and 22nd, 23rd. Uh, Comet Atlas, Comet Swan, and Asteroid uh, 1998 OR2, and Asteroid uh, AT6. So all of these are going to be in an alignment, and I'm not sure how powerful this is, but it sure, it sure is powerful to me, and you would think, again, that NASA and J JPL and the European Space Agency would all just be knocking themselves over to get in front of the cameras about these great events, but nothing. Um, also, that bright object that is supposed to be Venus, a lot of you have gone out there and have seen it and have commented that it does not look right. Venus does not look right, and if it is Venus, then something's going on with it. Um, and uh, a great uh, uh, YouTuber has been following this the situation with the bright light and the brightness of Venus, uh, Brandon, uh, Brandon Veach. Uh, he has this all month long cataloged, uh, uh, the advancement, the enlargement of this bright light, and, and it's just, it's, it's not normal. So I've got a link below uh, to Brandon's, uh, Brandon's YouTube uh, page and he is a creator that's doing some great documentation. So go give him a like, a thumbs up, and also uh, subscribe to his channel so you can know when uh, his new work comes out because he is doing great work. Also below, um, Ray's astro uh, astro astrophotography. Ray's astrophotography page has done a great job of documenting not only Comet uh, Atlas and Comet Sw and talking about Comet Swan, but he's also documented a comet that I talked about early on, which I also think that could have been uh, the Red uh, Kashina, and and so uh, this this is an interesting comment on its own, uh, Comet Panstars. So I'm going to leave a link to Ray's um, astrophotography page because he shows A, that Comet Atlas looks very together and very bright in the sky. It doesn't look like it's falling apart the same way or in any way that a comet would, like Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. But he uses software to analyze Comet, um, Comet Atlas Y4, and that software sees four objects traveling together at the same speed. Not in a line, but four objects going along as a group with one major object. So there's, there's a lot of interesting features in this one comet that with all of the uh, telescopes that we have and radio telescopes that we have, we should be having detailed, beautiful, informative video and images of these comets and we are getting nothing, nothing, nothing. So when the government is quiet, that is when you have to be concerned that something is going on. And I am not mad about it. I'm not mad about it at all, but I am saying that you should be paying attention because the government isn't giving you the information and they are giving you misinformation because uh, as Ray has demonstrated, these four objects are traveling together. They're not falling apart and they're not being pulled in a gravitational uh, tug the same way Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 was. They are four objects that are traveling as a group, traveling together and having a great journey and they're going to intersect with Comet Swan in our Northern Hemisphere around May, uh, May 20th, and this is going to be a great event. And what's going to occur from it, I don't know, but I strongly still feel that these are the end of times, that there's going to be an EMP, and the Fifth Age is coming upon us. If I'm wrong, and I reserve the right to be wrong, 
All I'm asking you to do is have two to four months worth of supplies. And if I'm wrong, all you're gonna do is have two to four months where you're just not gonna have to shop as much because you're gonna consume it. I'm just asking for you to keep some food and stay indoors when you hear the great noise occurring because that's all the prophecies ask. So um, that's my update so far uh, on these areas. We had one huge thing happen uh, Wednesday, Thursday time frame, and that is a comet dump of, of what, um, what NASA is dubbing as sudden discoveries of 19 intergalactic comets. And they are saying these comets are intergalactic visitors, that they're just not your regular old standard asteroid, meteor, or, or, or comets, that these are special, 19 of them. They dumped them Thursday. Uh, I have a great deal of political experience, worked in uh, capacities in Congress and in local and state politics in America. And I know if you want to hide something in public, then you do a document dump Thursday evening, Friday, Friday evening, because that's when the media is just exhausted and they've, they really do work on a four day work week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, anything that comes out Thursday or Friday just doesn't get any attention because Saturday, Sunday shows are already in production starting Wednesday. So we have 19 new comments. I talked about it in my previous video. Uh, take a look at that. It's astounding information. Um, and all the real official information that we are getting about these space objects, these space bodies, are quasi-governmental agencies and smaller government, governmental agencies. The big boys are quiet on these events, so pay attention, pay attention. When the government is noisy about something, you can pretty much ignore it because they're just tooting horns about things that have already happened. But if they're quiet, there's a reason. And usually when there's a vacuum of information from the government, it's because they are hiding something and they are doing it on purpose. But we know from prophecies that this is the way it is supposed to happen. All right. So I have taken this all the way back to Zoroastrianism. I really feel that that is our fundamental beginning of our fourth age, the age where we had freedom of choice. And in that freedom of choice, the Creator asks you to do three things. Think good thoughts, do good deeds, and say good things. So do that in these days and you'll be better for it. Uh, notice that there's just a lot of change happening and stay in touch because Breadcrumbs Project is on the case and I'll keep posting videos and bringing as much new information together and putting the breadcrumbs together and see if we can reconstruct that whole loaf of truth. All right, peace. Have a great night, everyone. Oh, and look at Venus, document Venus. If you have a really good camera, uh, like a, uh, you know, like a Canon or a Nikon with a good zoom lens, uh, zoom in on Venus and uh, take some video and post it. All right, guys. Bye.